top, margins, top and bottom are six inches. Okay. Um, and the side margins are four. If the area of the printed material on the poster is this, it's fixed. This area is given as 384 centimeters squared. Find the dimensions of the poster with the smallest area. This is the area. Let me use a different color. So this is the area. So this is fixed, the inside is fixed. So we want to find the dimensions of the poster having this restriction. This is a restriction. This area is 384. Find the dimensions of the poster with the smallest area. So we are interested in minimizing the area. I cannot minimize a function I don't have. So our first step is to determine a function that represents the area of the entire poster. So I have to use some notation here. And that's, that's my next step. I'm going to say, let's say that this is x. And I'm going to say that this is y. If that's the case, can anyone give us the um, width and the height of the poster? Keeping in mind that we denoted this by x and we denoted this by y. Eight plus x times twelve. Excellent. Plus Very good. So the area of the poster <coughs> will be indeed x plus eight times y plus twelve. Do we all agree with that? Is that a yes? So then the area is xy plus 12x plus 8y plus 96. We are told that x times y is 384. I think that that's what it was. Yes, 384 centimeters squared. Of course, I have to get rid of one of the two variables because I can't have a function with two variables. I will replace this by one by 384, but from here I also have to solve for one or the other. Well, let's say I'm dividing by x. And now the area is indeed a function of x. This was replaced by 384 plus 12x is 12x plus 8 multiplied by y, 384 over x plus 96. So the area is 12x plus 2 and 3, 64 plus 367 and 6, 30. Correct me if I'm wrong with my numbers, please. Don't let me make an error. Plus, um, I have 0, this is 17, 18, and 4. OK. I'm happy I have the function from this moment on smooth sailing because a prime would be 12 minus, careful, 3072 over x squared and this is 0. Because 1 over x prime is one negative 1 over x squared. I have to find the least common denominator. Why? Because I have to solve the equation f prime of x equals 0. A fraction is 0 when only when the top is 0. So from here, 12x squared minus 3072 must be 0. So x squared is this. OK. OK, it's fully charged. So 3072 divided by 12, I get 256. And when I take the square root of 256, that's a good one. I love it. 
So then x equals plus or minus 16, of course not. This is, these are the correct algebraic answers, but only 16 centimeters. So it means that the dimensions will be, so 384 divided by 16 is 24. So the dimensions will be uh, 16 by 24 for the minimum area. And this means nothing. It means nothing, because I have not shown that this is true, that that value gives a minimum. Since I have not convinced you yet, I have to try. So what I'm going to do, I have to show this, in which I have 16 and 0. Of course, it's not 0 will not make any sense. Infinity will not make any sense. But I'm, I have to study the sign of this expression. And this expression has two solutions. It has 16 and negative 16. But negative 16 doesn't mean anything here. So when I plug in 0, of course, not in the denominator. The denominator is always positive. But when I plug in 0, the answer is negative. And when I plug in 100, the answer will be positive. So this is typical for a minimum. I need to show that. Now, if we're asked to find the minimum, then I have to find a of 16, uh, which is this. 12 times 16 plus 3, 0, 7, 2 over 16 plus 4, 80. And this will be in centimeters squared. I got 864 in case we're asked to find. And this is guaranteed to be uh, the absolute min. Yes, area with the given restrictions that the middle part, the printed area, is 384 squared centimeters. We have to be given some restrictions on all problems because we can determine infinities, right? So we will always have something to uh, refer to. Good. Anything else? Any questions on this problem? Any questions? Is this OK? Yes, the extra credit, I think. I, I can barely see, hear you, but uh, yes. Find the slant asymptote of the function I think you're, you're referring to. So we have um, f of x negative 3x cubed plus 2x minus 2, and it's divided by x squared minus 1. Good. So we know that the slant asymptote, um, that only the only functions that have slant asymptote are the ones with a difference in degree. So the top has degree th 3 and the bottom has degree 2. Only when there is one difference in the degree, the top has to be by one unit. The degree of the top has to be by one unit higher than the degree of the denominator. Then the function will have a slant asymptote. And it's only the quotient. The quotient is the slant asymptote. So I have to use the long division. My only chance here is uh, to use a long division. Both polynomials have to be in descending order. They are. I'm dividing by x squared minus 1. But the numerator has degree 3. But there is one term that is missing. I will leave some space for it. I may need it or not. I don't know. It doesn't matter. If it's there and I don't need to use it, good. If it's there and I need to use it, then you should, I mean, if I need to use it, it should be there. Otherwise, I can't uh, perform the operations correctly. OK, so the question is, remember, this has to be a line. So x squared times what is negative 3x cubed? So the answer is negative 3x. Negative 3x distributed to x squared gives us negative 3x cubed, but we have to change the sign. 
then negative three X times negative one will be positive three X. I, I change the sign to negative three X and I write it below like term. These two are gone. Here I have negative X and minus two and I cannot continue because X squared does not go into negative X. So this function can be written as negative three X plus or minus, I will write minus, x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1. This is the slant asymptote. y equals negative 3x is the slant asymptote. In case you have any doubts about your um, long division here, you can always go back and check. How do you check? So this is like saying 10 divided by 3 is 3 plus 1 third. How will I check? 3 times 3 plus 1 has to give me 10. So when I multiply this by this, and I subtract x and subtract 2, if I get the numerator, the original numerator, then the division is correct. If I don't get the original den uh, numerator, then I'll say, oops. Okay, so let's do that, just in case you need to check. So when I multiply these two, I get negative 3x to the third, and then positive 3x, and then minus x, and then minus 2. And when I combine like, term, I, like terms, I get negative 3x cubed plus 2x and minus 2. And that was the starting point. And this is how we check, if you like to check. Please remember to finish the web assign. I can't let you take the test. Minimum 60%. I really hope that you don't work for 60%. But at least 60%. Please. All the work has to be done before the test. And I'm hoping you'll have questions for me. Is this okay? Was the long division okay? Was it clear? Is there any way to solve this without long division? No. No. Well, to be exact, you could um, use synthetic division like this. 3x cubed plus 2x minus 2 divided by x plus 1 and x minus 1. Synthetic division doesn't work unless you have a denominator like this or like this. So you could first divide by x plus 1. Ah. Sorry. So the coefficients of the top are negative 3, 0, 2, and negative 2. So synthetic division requires that we copy the first coefficient always. So negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. I write it above the line. I perform the operations. Negative 1 times 3, negative 3. I perform the operations. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. I perform the operations. And um, I do have a problem, however, because uh, the remainder is not 0. So I can't really apply synthetic division. Because if the remainder were 0, then I would have continued here with positive 1 and then gotten the same answer. But the remainder is not 0. So Is it like a thing in the calculator where you divide two functions, like the bears, the variables thing? So you want to plug in the calculator this? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah. I can do it as two separate functions, the numerator and the denominator. And can you divide them? Yeah. With a calculator? Yeah. And what did the calculator give you? I didn't do it. I have not seen a calculator who does that, which does that. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But if you're using, uh, for example, 89, 91, and not show the work, I can only give this. These are not allowed. They're not allowed at any university. 
not just at our college. So potentially 89 and 91 or even 92 uh, will do that. But if you don't show any work, I can't give any credit. Because you cannot use these. I don't recommend them. But, you know, I don't know, maybe these new calculators I have never checked. I, I was never curious. The, show the work. You have to show all your work for full credit. It is possible. I didn't even know that this calculator has an app that uh, that uh, solves polynomial equations, to be honest. One of you showed me. Good, next question. At this uh, point, uh, what is more important is your understanding of the topic than just punching in and getting something there. 